All right, uh, 3.45 the time. Giving you a, a list, and obviously this is uh, maybes, uh, that uh, may run against Trump in 2020. Uh, with uh, the 2020 uh, campaign kicking off in about 12 months, you know, you got to start looking at, uh, you know, who's, uh, who's sticking their foot in the door. Well, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders tops the list. Uh, you know, if, if you get a chance, it's a must-read story from Politico's uh, Gabriel DiMinetti. Uh, showed how Sanders seems to be addressing the shortcomings that hampered his candidacy in 2016. Now think about it. This guy was basically beating Hillary Clinton to the point where Hillary and the Democratic Party had to stack the deck in their favor against somebody that was in their their own party. They were they were shortchanging the guy. There's no doubt. Um, that alone, if you were you know playing what if I were Bernie Sanders, um, that alone to me would say okay, it's my turn now. I got shortchanged last time. Hillary Clinton and the entire Democratic Party were working against me. Um, you know, most notably, his lack of familiarity with foreign policy, uh, inroads with powerful pro-democratic groups like the American Federation of Teachers, he has done nothing to diminish speculation that he's going to run again. You know, that could be just, you know, bad karma off his last run. I don't think it is. I think he will run again. The biggest question is, and will be, his age. He's 76. As uh, it is with Jerry Brown, who's now 80, and Biden, 76 years old. So I don't think, I mean, young people absolutely love this guy because he stood for just about everything they thought they stood for. Now, after they go out and get a job and get a couple of uh, check stubs and see the deductions and see what's going on, that that will change. But in the meantime, there's still, uh, there's still, just absolutely gathering around Bernie Sanders. I don't think he's willing to walk away from that. So, um, you know, if it was a head-to-head Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump, you know, which way do you think it'll go? Uh, That's so far out of all the people I've talked about that have shown an interest in running in 2020, I think Bernie Sanders would be the guy uh, that would run, not necessarily to win, but would run. I, uh, I don't. I don't see him walking away. Hey, can I take my statement back? What statement? About not voting for Dwayne Rock Johnson. Oh, you'd rather after, have the Rock after you have read all that list. I think I want to go back to number fifteen. Oh, I see. So that's what. See, that's what I'm talking about. I just went through the top fifteen Democrat presidential candidates for 2020 as it stands now. Of course, that could change in 12 months. I just. I can't. I mean, if you want to be Venezuela. Uh, if you want to be socialist, uh, which kids seem to, the millennials especially, they love all that. Of course, they don't know anything about it or what it is. They just know, hey, it's free college. Uh, partner, nothing in this country is free. Somebody's going to foot the bill somewhere along the line. Um, I, I think Bernie Sanders will be the guy for the Democrats to beat again. And they may. They may try. But after... Uh, losing the Democratic Party chair and losing Hillary Clinton, and I think he's ready. I think that's all he, he's been doing is watching this. Wouldn't you love to see Bernie Sanders every day on the campaign trail? Can't wait. Can't wait to see that. It's almost as bad as Elizabeth Warren, isn't it? Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know how you feel about those folks. Uh, after getting that list, before I get into the Republicans, I'm going to take your calls. You've heard the people that uh, have shown an interest, that have stated uh, that they may run. Um, Anybody on, and of course you know Bernie Sanders from last time around, Uh, you know Mario Cuomo because he's pretty high profile. It's New York City. Uh, How do you feel any of these people would fare head-to-head with Donald Trump? 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. I believe out of all those people, out of those top 15 Democrat, possible Democrat presidential candidates, uh, the one I would fear the most if I were running Trump's campaign for re-election 
would be Bernie Sanders. And not for a logical reason, but because kids absolutely, I mean, they were, you know what happened last time. The Democrat, uh, Democrat Party had to work behind the scenes uh, to try and put this guy down, to try and put Hillary above him. He was beating her. He was absolutely beating Hillary Clinton, the foregone conclusion to the to the entire race. It, uh, I, I'm telling you, if he runs, it uh, it might be a horse race. Do you think the public is tired of professional politicians? I don't know, Randy. I, I look at it this way. Uh, you know, it, it's a funny thing. For, for 20 years, the mantra has been, I want my country back, I want my country back, I want my country back. Um, they installed a billion-dollar playboy real estate developer just to show the status quo. Uh, they still control the process, which was a good thing. Uh, Reagan was a citizen politician, but we're not in Reagan's time anymore. It's not the same political landscape. Um, as long as Trump continues for the next year as he has, yeah, there may be something there. Or they're going to go diametrically opposed to that. Well, I'm just too uncomfortable. I feel too sketchy. I'm going to go back to what I know. No, let uh, Hillary hear you say that. Going back to what you know could be the biggest mistake you ever made. I mean, what, so, what's been going on the last 20 years? Yeah. Well, it's either going to be one or the other. There is, in this, I can't see any gray area here. Um, Amy. Uh, Amy, I'm not exactly sure where Amy's calling from. Uh, Amy, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Amy? I'm doing good. I'm calling from Telephone. Texas. Oh, okay. Um, well, I think, like you said, I think Bernie Sanders probably, um, I think he would be a big contender for Trump, especially he would have been last time. But um, I don't want to see a woman as president. I know that sounds crazy, but as a woman, um I don't like to see women in politics too much. Really? And I say that. No, wait, wait, wait a second before I'm before they <laughs> you know storm the station with pitchforks <laughs> and torches. Why, as a woman, why is it you don't like to see women in politics? Um, well, my views are probably controversial. Um, I think women and men are very different. Um, they I are. Believe they think different. They act different, and that's a good thing. I think we were designed to be different, and I think women are very emotional. And I think as you've seen women enter politics more and more and more, I think you've seen a lot of uh, feeling-based policy increase. We've got it welfare, um, this and this and that. And I think women, I hate to say it, I, I just, um, I, I, I just, I don't want a woman president. I think they're too emotional. I think we deal uh, diplomacy with a lot of countries who do not see women in power roles, such as the Middle East. Um, the Middle East, Russia, and Asiatic countries value strength and male strength. They're very patriarchal societies. Um, and so I like to see a man in that seat, not a woman. Well, I, I, I agree with you. Men and women are different. And especially and, liberal women. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. But, I mean, gender-wise, men and women are different. Um, they and, are. You know, we keep trying to make them the same, but they're not designed the same. Um, no. I mean, no. one deals out of emotion tempered with logic. The other, most of the time, deals with logic tempered out of emotion. And you yeah. look at, instead of trying to make everybody the same, we ought to be celebrating the differences, not trying to ignore them. Well, and, and may I say this, th there's another reason for this as well. Um, I, I have I have three children, a daughter and two sons. And as a mother of sons, I don't like the way the country's going. It's very anti-man. Uh, we've gone. I'm not a feminist, I, at least not a second or third wave. Um, and also, I'd like to say, you know, my husband works for um, in the aero defense uh, industry. And I also would go so far as I don't really think men and women need to work together that much. We've been trying this experiment for about, mm, what, 70, 80 years, and I don't think it's healthy. Um, I've seen my husband and his coworkers. Uh, just the just the environment of women. Women can say one thing. They can say this person made me feel uncomfortable and you would see HR explode and they'll do everything they can to make sure that woman is, you know, you know, we don't want to make her feel uncomfortable, but the word uncomfortable is very ambiguous. And the men, a lot in his, his office and he does work in the engineering field. So there's mainly men and also across the company, they know, they know 
don't cross a woman because you'll never win. Yeah. Uh, Amy, I, I got I'm on a heartbreaker. I got a, a very interesting phone call, Amy. Very interesting indeed. Um, and Amy says Sanders is the best and women shouldn't be president. I think she's right. Well, I think she's right as far as Bernie Sanders. Um, I, I don't see any female in the current crop of Democrats um, that I would be comfortable with, not because of their gender, but because of who they are and what they've been. All right, let me step aside. Back with your calls, 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. Your call straight ahead in the court of public opinion. 